Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brendan Plays. This is our Total Extreme Wrestling All Elite Wrestling Save AEW All Out today. This is it, big pay per view day. Looking forward to it. Uh, the card is all booked. We are all ready to go. Let's have a quick look at what the card will be tonight. So on this show, we've got Cody and MJF for the world title, Punk and Omega, CM Punk's first match back. We've got the Young Bucks and the Wild Things for the tag titles, Jungle Boy and Park for the TNT, Baker and Brandy for the women's, Malachi Black and Chris Jericho, Christian Cage, Adam Page, we've got the ladder match, we've got the Battle Royal, Dustin and Agogo, and Carla and Avalon to round out the card. Big show indeed, lots of big matches, a few lower card matches to try and spotlight a few newer talents as well. So it's a good mix and um, I'm looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and jump straight on into it. Now, obviously heading into All Out uh, last year, we had a 74 rated edition of All Out. So it wasn't our strongest card, I suppose. Headlined by MJF and John Moxley. MJF won his first world title on this card. So that was that big feud with MJF Moxley. And obviously MJF lost the title back a few months later. Things like that. So yeah, it was um, certainly an exciting time. You know, we were really starting to get going around this period, which was good. Um, some other matches, Adam Page, Sammy Guevara, 78, FTR and the Young Bucks. Didn't quite live up to the hype, 72. So... Probably not our strongest card, I suppose. The Lucha Bros versus Cody and Brian Pillman Jr. Yeah, I remember that. That was good. Um, so not our strongest card. So I think we can be... I, I think we should be able to beat 74 tonight. In fact, if we don't beat 74 tonight, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. Because I feel like this card is stacked. I feel like this is going to be our best and biggest event we've ever had. So let's not wait around any longer. Let's jump straight into it. The card is booked. And let's kick things off with the pre-show. All right, let's get into All Out. Let's kick it off with the pre-show. And it'll be Peter Avalon versus Brandon Cutler, one-on-one. 46-rated match here between these two, which is a hell of a lot better than I expected. Peter Avalon, 47-rated. That's actually pretty damn good. Uh, Brandon Cutler, 35. Peter Avalon picks up the win, 12-minute match. Look, you know, this is a match that probably doesn't really belong in a pay-per-view. That's why it's on the pre-show. But it actually turned out to be decent, so, okay, I can't complain with that. 47, 46 rated, 47 from Peter Avalon, maybe there's something there, maybe Peter Avalon can maybe bring the wingman up a little bit, uh, as I suppose their new leader, not bad. So, Brandon Cutler's getting close to turning, not going to turn him tonight, but probably maybe next Dynamite or so, we might um, go ahead and put him in with the Elite as their stooge. So, next up. We've got Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara with um, Sammy Guevara basically telling Chris Jericho, look, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the ladder match tonight. You gave me an ultimatum. You said, it's is it me? Is it the inner circle? Or is it the ladder match? So it, it's going to be the ladder match for Sammy. So he's decided I need to focus on trying to better my own career, further my own career, and get my own career to the point where I could be a full-fledged main event star. And that's the plan for him. So instead of helping Jericho deal with Malachi Black, he's going to focus on trying to win that ladder match. 82 rated segment, pretty good. All right, we had the pinnacle. Uh, we had FTR and Sean Spears team up to take on Fuego Del Sol and Vasti Blondes. 58 rated match here with uh, Dax 69. Cash 71, Sean Spears 46. Over on the Bayface side, 42 from Pillman, 33 from Garrison, and 30 from Fuego. Okay, so just a, a thrown together match to get the pinnacle on the card, basically, to get them a win. I didn't want to upset them by not having them a, a featured on the card. So we did decide to put them in some capacity here. Six-man tag. They, of course, pick up a win to get them some momentum. 58 rated match, though, is pretty decent. Paul White gives his predictions on Anthony Agogo versus Dustin Rhodes. 75 rated for this one. Yeah, cheeky little way to try and boost up a straw on hit for this for this rivalry heading into the pay-per-view match tonight. The private party took on the acclaim for 53 on the pre-show as well. Isaiah 61, Mark Quinn 56, Bowen's 37, Max Caster 35. So private party's been in the mix in the tag team turmoil storyline, if you will. They've been one of the, the the teams that's been getting a lot of opportunities. They had a, a well a tag title match against. Uh, the Young Bucks, the acclaimed, a bit of controversy with them having, you know, potentially been one of the reasons why SCU had to retire and break up. 
they were kind of at the helm of that and then of course the men of the year took over so you know there's a bit of momentum from both teams here so i figured why not have them both in the mix why not get them both on the card on the pre-show wrestle each other and try and you know have a good match and i think they did 53 rated not bad so the private party did pick up the win Opening contest of the pay-per-view, Adam Page, Christian Cage, 85 rated. Adam Page, 83, Christian, 76. Both guys performing really, really well. Adam Page picks up the win, 19-minute match. Great result for Adam Page, great match. Christian Cage delivers again as well. You know, he's been really good since returning. Uh, he's been a real asset for the team. Adam Page hasn't quite won the big one. He's been so close. Hasn't quite got there yet, but um, I win here to keep his momentum building and to keep him looking good as one of our top stars in the company. Cody Rhodes gives a promo on his match with MJF tonight, 83 rated. Pretty good. So Cody Rhodes, quick little comment before his big match in the main event. All right, we had the Casino Battle Royale with the women of AEW fighting it out here. So in the end, Jay Cargill picks up a win in about 11 minutes. Uh, we had Chris Statland and Nyla Rose as the final four with Camille. So Camille obviously making her debut here, gets her first chance to show what she can do in the ring. She's on alone, so we got her for five appearances. So we gave her a strong showing here. Um, Chris Statlander was the last one eliminated. Jade got the most eliminations, and Nyla Rose survived the longest. So, yeah, good overall match. Um, you know, we tried to feature all the women here and get them on the card, get them in a big spot here, and 48 rated. So I feel like I feel like this could be a really good thing for the women because a lot of the women got featured in this one, especially some of the lower cards. So it's a way to get. Pretty much all the women, you know, every woman on the roster, I think, I think except maybe one, was in this match. So that's a good thing. It should help get them all to that minimum benchmark popularity and potentially even um, increase their popularity by being involved in a, a pretty decent 48 rated match. So there's a chance that this could really lead to a lot of good things. Jade Cargill picks up the win. Um, we're looking to maybe do a storyline with Jade and Britt Baker going forward with potentially turning Britt Baker as a babyface. Jade Cargill stays as a heel and we kind of flip the script a little bit and go in that direction. Post-match though, Camille's furious that she lost because Jade kind of cheated and threw her out of the ring um, and they brawled post-match. So 40 rated here for this one. And we're going to set up a little short-term program between Jade and Camille. Obviously, two big women fight it out, you know, and kind of give Jade one more big win before she gets her title match. So uh, looking forward to seeing how that one kind of plays out in the future. Jungle Boy and Park had a 77 rated match. Are you kidding me? Wow. Wow. Park 80. Jungle Boy 64. Great, great match. Park defeated Jungle Boy in about 20 minutes and it makes it his 14th defense of his TNT Championship. So Park still delivering the goods, still showing us what he can do, still showing us why he's the be one of the best on the roster, and a great win. Great showing though for Jungle Boy, real chance to see show us what he can do as a singles, and you know, it, it won't be a singles run for him anytime soon, but it kind of forecasts what he might be able to accomplish uh, down the line in his career. Post-match, Luchasaurus made his return. So he's been out of action for a month or so to help Jungle Boy from a death triangle assault. So Penta and Park try to, you know, beat down Jungle Boy even more after the match. But Luchasaurus comes in to save the day. So we bring back Luchasaurus, reunite Jurassic Express, and we probably go back in the tag team direction for Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Maybe even go back to the FTR rivalry that we didn't get a chance to really complete. Next up, we had the Casino Ladder Match, 52. Oh no, oh my goodness. 52 rated for this one. Now, before we went ahead and did this match, and I'll show you the proof, we had a message from the road agent. He said, look, the fans of AEW are not gonna like this sort of match. I couldn't believe it, you know, who, why would AEW fans not like an eight-man ladder match? They're gonna they're gonna like that, of course. But apparently not on these product settings. The fans don't like it. So we were gonna be penalized for having this style of match. And me thinking to myself, look, you know what? 
I'll take the penalty. I'm gonna do an eight man ladder match. I've been saying I've been gonna do a eight man, eight man ladder match all this time. I can't back out on it now. So we went ahead, we did it, and the fans absolutely hated it. 52 rated, it sucked. Orange Cassidy, 60. Guevara, 84, best in the match. Hobbs, 53. Cage, 68. Starks, 56. Archer, 66. Miro, 79. Ray Phoenix, 72. Those performances were good. It, it realistically, if we didn't get penalized, I think this is a 75 rated match. Honestly, I think this goes down pretty well. Maybe because it's a, a multi-man match, maybe like 71, 72. But a lot of the guys in the match did really well. Even Hobbs, you know, 53. Starks, 56. The two of the lesser performers both did really, really well. So, honestly, I'm surprised that it didn't, didn't go that well, even though we had the penalty. But regardless, Sammy Guevara, he picked up the win. Uh, 17 minute match, Guevara grabs the, the briefcase or the contract, whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, the casino chip, that's what they use. Yeah, the big chip. And uh, he's now the next contender for the world championship. So Sammy Guevara will get a world title match next. Post-match in the backstage locker room, Chris Jericho interrupted Sammy Guevara's post-match interview and congratulated him. When I say congratulate, you know, was it genuine? Was Jericho kind of still annoyed that he didn't really want to help him out in his match? You know, Jericho, a bit snarky, you know, a bit kind of, uh, you know, just a bit, bit of a shitty way that he kind of went about it. 79. So clearly there's a little bit of dissension here between Inner Circle and Sammy Guevara. Speaking of Chris Jericho, he went one-on-one -on -one with Malachi Black next for an 81 rated match. Malachi Black, 72. Chris Jericho, excellent, 84. Malachi Black gets a clean win over Chris Jericho. So, obviously, the storyline's been, you know, look, Malachi Black took care of the inner circle. He's been beating them down. He, he beat down, uh, even beat down Sammy Guevara. But Sammy Guevara, look, he wasn't looking for revenge. He, he didn't have time or the energy to focus on Malachi Black. He had to focus on winning the ladder match. And it's meant that the inner circle have been a little bit distracted, even weakened, I suppose you could say. Chris Jericho's head's not in the game. And Malachi Black's been able to take care of the inner circle and kind of cause dissension between the group. So Malachi Black grabs a win here over Chris Jericho. And post-match, well, here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So Malachi Black, yeah, he is a bay face. So he's, you know, he's obviously not happy with the way Inner Circle's kind of gone about it. They've been running rough shot on AEW for years now. So Malachi Black, he's determined to try and take down this group for the for the greater good. Post-match, the Inner Circle tried to beat down Malachi Black, but Darby Allen, finally, Darby Allen is back makes his return to save Malachi Black. So we bring back Darby. We're gonna have Darby and Malachi form an alliance. They're gonna go together. I feel like that's a nice pairing. And they're gonna form a group, maybe not stable, but just at least maybe a, a little tag team or you know, an alliance is probably the way to, to say it. To try and, you know, form, form together to go after the inner circle or even in general, just be together long-term. So I feel like that's a good way to try and elevate Darby utilize Malachi Black's popularity because um, Sting in our game wouldn't suit because he's obviously in that manager role, you know, the GM role, so it wouldn't quite suit. So instead of Sting, Malachi Black, and now obviously they could team up a lot more together. So it's a way to try and elevate Darby Allen back to the main event. And I feel like they both have similar enough characters that where it makes some sense. So Darby returns to save Malachi Black from an inner circle beatdown, and things are getting even harder for the inner circle to try and stop Malachi. Next up, Brandy Rhodes and Britt Baker went one-on-one -on -one for a 50-rated match. Brandy, the best in the match, 47. Britt Baker, 44. Britt Baker wins after the interference from Jesse McKay, Cassie Lee, aka the Inspiration, or formerly known as the Iconics. So Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, they are now in AEW as Cassie Lee and Jesse McKay. They interrupt to screw over Brandy Rhodes and cost her the match. Brandy and Britt have pretty good chemistry and it lifted the match. So this is a match maybe we need to revisit down the line. They've got good chemistry. It was a good match overall. Um, and obviously Cassie Lee, her new, her new gimmick, same with Jesse McKay, both given a rating of adequate. So that's okay. That's pretty decent. And post-match, the inspiration, they continued attacking Brandy Rhodes. Red Velvet tried to save, but wasn't able to do it. 
reason why they're coming after Brandy. Brandy and Red have been kind of talking about how they're the best tag team in AEW in the women's division. They've been able to beat the other two tag teams in the women's division. So, you know, they're unofficial crown, you know, unofficially crowned the best in AEW. So, obviously, the inspiration, take exception to that. They're coming to AEW to showcase how good they are and to prove that Brandy and Red aren't the best in AEW. 38 for that one. All right, well now we're getting ready for the big CM Punk Kenny Omega match. Fingers crossed. I'm hoping around 90. I really am. I feel like this is going to be the best match we've had in the series. Let's see it. Punk and Omega one on one. 88. Close. Very, very close. CM Punk defeats Kenny Omega. 22 minute match. His big comeback. He had to give it all tonight to win it. Punk, 86 in the ring. Kenny Omega 89. Well, I guess maybe Kenny is the best in the world in terms of match rating. But anyway, CM Punk um, picks up a win. 88 rated match. Big return for Punk. Comes back in a huge match. Probably the, one of the best matches we've ever had in the series. Could be the best. I think the previous might have been 85. I'm not sure. But it, it would definitely be right up there as one of the best we've ever had. Uh, if not the best. And that's no better way to, to, to bring him back. Come back and show that, yeah, he's still got it. He's still one of the best in the world. He and Kenny tear the house down. And an excellent, excellent match. Punk is officially back. Thank God. Dustin Rhodes and Anthony Ogogo went one-on-one -on -one for a 40-rated match. Anthony Ogogo picked up the win when QT Marshall got himself involved, helping Anthony pick up the win. Look... We're trying here to make Anthony Agogo something. He's got, I think, 78 star power. So he really could be a star. He really could be something in our game. I'm trying. Dustin Rhodes puts him over here, puts over the young talent. Dustin has been gaining quite a lot of popularity as of late. He's gained a few extra points from this rivalry. I don't know how, but he did. So he's got a bit more popularity to give. So I'm not too concerned about Dustin and his future. I mean, at the end of the day, he could retire any time in our game. He's at, at he's at that age where it's possible. And Gogo, he's not very good in the ring, but you know, I feel like we've got him. We may as well try and use him. We may as well try and get him over. We don't have a developmental system, unfortunately. If we did, he would definitely be there and not on the main roster. So we have to try and get him over and build him and develop him whilst. He's on TV, and this is the best way to go about it. So, a 40 rated match, pretty good, and a go go grabs the win. We then had the Wild Things taking on the Young Bucks in a 71 rated match. Matt Jackson pinned Eddie Kingston using the ropes for leverage to cheat their way to their ninth championship defense. In the end, Eddie Kingston 61, Moxley 86, Nick Jackson 87, Matt Jackson 75. The match dropped because Matt Jackson broke his nose during this match. Um, so, look, when you break your nose during the match, that's obviously going to impact the way you're going to go about it. And it did. He went from probably an 87 to a 75. If he had it performed at 100%, I feel like this match gets close to 80. Kingston brings it down, yes, but there was enough there to really um, get them to the point where this match could be right up there as one of the better ones of the night. But unfortunately, the broken nose brings this one down a little bit. Maybe we need a rematch. I don't know. Like, I, I, but Matt, Matt Jackson, a broken nose, he might be, you know, he, he'll still be able to wrestle, but he might be working through an injury for a few weeks. So he might, we might have to wait for that rematch for a few weeks anyways. All right, let's continue on. So Moxley botched his move, injuring Matt Jackson. So he's got some backstage heat. So maybe the EVPs might be looking to get Moxie out of here. That's not good. All right, we had an MJF promo ahead of his big title defense, 79 rated. All right, main event time. We know the main event isn't going to be as good as the Punk match, but I'm hoping that it's maybe as good as the Adam Page Christian match. So Punk, sorry, Cody Rhodes, MJF in the main event. Can it beat the Punk match? I don't know, but let's have a look. I'm hoping for 85. The main event of All Out. 79, wow, wow, okay, Cody, 86, MJF, 87, it looks like the storyline heat is the reason why this fell, I didn't check the storyline heat heading into the main event, um, I didn't know how good it was, but it looks as though potentially, potentially this um, didn't quite get there, they didn't quite, you know, deliver 
the way that we want it. I thought the storyline hit was around, you know, the 90s. I thought it was really, really good, you know, heading in. We had some really good promos between both guys. Maybe it fell off a little bit in the last few weeks. So, unfortunately, 79 for the main event really kind of brings down what would have been an amazing pay-per-view. We would have had definitely our best show ever. Maybe the main event brings it down a little bit. In the end, Cody Rhodes does become the new AEW World Champion. We've given him the belt after all this time. You know, he finally gets his ultimate revenge on MJF, taking the World Championship from him in the main event of All Out. 79 rated, big, big win for Cody. And post-match, Cody Rhodes celebrates winning the championship as well. In with, you know, gets amongst the fans. Huge win for Cody. Big baby face uh, reaction and support for Cody. So, I guess when you think about it, you know, they had to follow up from two amazing matches. The opener was great. Omega and Punk was great. So, they had a huge burden to try and overcome. Could they deliver? Could they go better than those matches? Well, the answer was no, they couldn't. And it gives us an 87 rated show. The best show we have ever done without a doubt. Without a doubt. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So obviously Punk and Omega was the best match in the card. We had Malachi and Jericho 81. Um, Paige and Christian. I can't believe that got 85. That is incredible. So really... Top to bottom, majority of the matches, all the big ones anyways, delivered. They were excellent. Really, only the latter match was poor. But um, let's give some support. Um, Kenny Omega did great. Uh, obviously, so, um, yeah, I'll go Adam Page. He was great in his performance. And you know what? I'm going to give Dustin Rhodes, I'm going to give him a hug for putting over Anthony Gogo. That's That's class. Appreciate it. Trying to help the new young guy. He wasn't a, he wasn't happy about it either. So, uh, Omega's very happy. Paige is pleased. So is Dustin Rhodes. Let's take a look at the fallout from All Out. As we had an 87 rated show. 25,000 in attendance. So, we went for a big building. It sold out. 358,000 buys. Now, that's not a realistic number. And I'm aware of that. That's a little bit way inflated. Maybe 180,000 could be a realistic number, so maybe half that. But um, yeah, look, nonetheless, big pay view, big results, and I feel like we're going to have a lot of um, big changes in popularity. Um, but anyways, we'll have a quick little look. Um, we also had 358,000 viewers. Maybe that, that's just the buy rate, yeah. 358,000, which is great. Matt Jackson obviously injured. We'll have a quick little look to see how long that injury is. Is he going to miss any time? No, just six days. So that's fine. He'll be all right very, very soon. So we could do that rematch if we wanted to. Um, but what we'll find now is obviously having such a huge pay-per-view, we gained $644,000 in revenue. Ticket sales, obviously, you know, filling out a 25,000-seat building. Um, it's going to mean we're going to make a big amount of money this month. It's probably going to be our highest, you know, easily our most money we've made in a month for sure. You know, with our pay-per-view revenue, it was way higher than any other one. Way, way higher than double or nothing. So, huge, huge money, huge, huge result for us. So, let's jump in. Let's take a look at the popularity changes. We'll start with the main event, guys. Adam Page, obviously, excellent match. Doesn't look like he had much of a change despite the win over Christian. Now, Jericho put over Malachi Black. So I probably should have given Jericho a bit of praise too. Jericho was around 85 popularity. Put over Malachi Black. And Malachi has gone up to, well, 77 now in the southeast. A few other areas around, you know, has jumped up a little bit. But in the southeast in particular, our home area, gone from 72 to 77. Basically now, Malachi Black is a made man. You know, he's one of the, the top stars in the company. I tell you what, he might want to start acting like it. You know, his performances were okay. 72 against Jericho here. It's not amazing, is it? There's a lot to kind of really prove here. He really does need to, you know, perform a lot better than that. It just was not good enough. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, so Jericho suffers a little bit. Christian Cage... Looks like he might have gone down, maybe? No. Okay, no, never mind. He's gone up a little bit. Um, must A small little increase. CM Punk hovering around the mid-80s. 
So he's doing fine. Uh, nothing to really to worry about there with Punk. So if anything, he's been gaining popularity. Wouldn't have gained a lot though, you know, from beating Kenny Omega because of the popularity difference. Cody Rhodes now 81 popularity. So big, big shoes for Cody to fill. He's now the world champion. Now I gave him the belt. I didn't actually have much like plans beyond giving him the championship. But obviously now there's so many guys for him to kind of deal with. And of course, we're going to be signing Adam Cole. We're going to be signing Brian Danielson. So there's a few factors involved there. Can Cody perform at a high enough level where he can keep the belt? You know, can he have a long reign as the champion? Is he good enough to do that? Well, you know, according to all his previous results over the years, you'd have to say yes. He's been one of our best. But, you know, there's going to be a really, really tough you know, shoes to fill for him at the moment. You know, on a main event level, he is great, but he hasn't quite delivered as big as we would like on occasion. Now, but to be fair to him, he did have an 87 rated match with Kenny, but on that night, he only performed at 77. So that's a small concern. Can Cody live up to the big matches? Well, giving him the belt, so I sure as hell hope so. I really, really do. Moxley, he lost to the Young Bucks. He's still around the 80 popularity mark. Possibly a drop, though, in popularity. You'd have to expect so. Um, I don't really think so. If anything, he might be a little gained a little bit. Kenny Omega, he's doing fine. He's been gaining, so he's in the low 80s, doing really, really well. The Young Bucks doesn't look like they've gained anything. Miro didn't lose from anything from his loss. MJF was around 84, 85, so a small little loss to Cody. Um, but yeah, so that's... That is fine. Sammy Guevara, he had a big win. He's now got 76 popularity. 76 popularity in the Southeast. How does he do it? He just gains popularity for fun. It's incredible. So he'll be the next challenger for Cody. So that'll be the first guy he deals with. Um, so that'll be the first match. And I think that'll be a good one. Um, obviously, I don't think Guevara will win the belt. But um, nonetheless, good, good match coming up anyways to kick off Cody's reign. So that'll be a good dynamite or rampage main event regardless uh, Eddie Kingston now into the 50s so that's obviously great news that's been our goal he's been put with the wild things we've been trying to get him over and it's working it really is uh, he hasn't got great star quality but his promos you know if we can get him to a point where he's like 55 60 popularity his promo segments will be very very good like they could be hitting 80 so um, high hopes there for him Jungle Boy 58 popularity in Southeast, 54 elsewhere after a, an excellent match with Park. Probably have to be his best match he's had, I would say. Yeah, it definitely is. 77. So the best match Park uh, Jungle Boy has been able to have. Luchasaurus, he had a big comeback. He had a 55 rated. No, so the no game for him, but a big comeback for Luchasaurus. So it's good to have him back. And now, obviously, Jurassic Express doing really, really well. I think that's going to be a team that will be one of our best We'll have to try and get them a formidable opponent. Obviously, we we're looking at uh, FTR, but maybe maybe we need to elevate them that little bit more. We'll have to wait and see. Um, so, Brandy Rhodes drops a little bit. I think she was around 46 pop, now dropping around 44, 45. Britt Baker, though, nice little jump here for her. She was at 38. Now, she's got 43. That's exactly what we're hoping for out of this rivalry. Try and get Britt over. And really, it didn't come at a big expense to Brandy. You know... Four, okay, so she was around 47 in the southeast. So she's only dropped two points. And Brits gained five. So that's awesome. That's huge. Really, really great. Now, obviously, the big news that happened before we booked, um, you know, we've already had booked All Out. And then once we had it booked, of course, in real life, All Out happened. Um, so now we know Adam Cole. He's joined AEW. So we'll be bringing him in, and I'm going to probably make him a heel as well, join the Elite. I feel like that's the best option for him. So he's got 71, 72 popularity, which is probably around fair. Maybe 65, honestly, is probably where I would sit him. Maybe he's gained a bit of popularity in here throughout his time in the series. Yeah, he has. So he started at 61 or so. He's been, you know, risen to 71 in, throughout his time in NXT. The big one's obviously Brian Danielson comes in at 79 popularity which is obviously massive for us as well probably a little under maybe yeah i suppose 79 that's probably fair so he'll come in as still as one of our top guys big star um big opportunity for him to really excel 
and you'd have to bring him in as a baby face, I feel. I don't think you could bring him in as anything else. So again, massive signing. It, it, honestly, like we've got two big names coming in to join what I feel is already a stacked main roster, a uh, main, main event roster. You know, our mid card is bad, lower mid card is terrible, our tag division is pretty good, but the main event scene is really solid. That's good. Like I feel like that's our strength. So the other one, that is, of course, as well, will be Ruby Soho. So obviously, formerly known as Ruby Riot, Heidi Lovelace was her other name as well. So she'll come in with 41, 40 pop. Um, she, so WWE were able to get her popularity up a little bit as well. So that's pretty big. You know, that's going to be a real interesting thing, thing for our division because she'll actually have some of the best popularity out of the whole division. Um, she performed at a, a 50 rated performance against Naomi in her last match in the WWE on the Indies, performing at 59. I feel like she could quite quickly be our best woman on the roster. I feel like she'll come in and be really, really good. So we're going to sign all three. So next episode, we should have them under contract or, or at least in negotiations. So that's huge for us. Um, I, don't, I do kind of feel like for me, I don't like signing a lot of people. I don't like it being easy and not having that challenge. So I feel like we do lose that challenge a little bit by having all these extra names come in. But... I know as a viewer, you're going to want to see what I'm going to do with all the new signings. You know, what am I going to do with Brian Danielson? What would I do with him? You know, what's what's an alternative way of looking at his AEW run? And that's what we're going to want to do. We're going to want to match what's happening in real life. Um, you know, someone like Jeff Hardy is probably the only person we've signed. I thought he would be the only big name that we'd have throughout the series to, to jump over. But turns out we've been able to add a lot more and we've already got quite as i said pretty stacked main event scene so we might look i don't know about introducing a new championship or anything like that but you know it's gonna be hard to imagine anyone else you know not 60 plus pop holding any championship any tnt championship even tag titles you really do need to be getting getting pretty over um, to hold anything that significant but what we should expect to see is our events being much higher rated, even our Dynamites, even our Rampages. 87 for All Out, it's our best ever show. Still didn't quite beat the Young Bucks in their circle. That was our best ever match. That was a 90 rated. Punk and Omega didn't quite get there. Close, but only second to the Young Bucks and Inner Circle. So still a little bit more room to improve. So there's still more to accomplish. You know, our size, we've now risen to 72 in the Southeast. It was only a couple of months ago we couldn't gain any popularity at all. We were, we were at a standstill. We were struggling. And now we add a couple of different names. We add in CM Punk. We get a few more guys over. Malachi Black's been decent. All of a sudden, things are starting to change very, very quickly for us. And we're heading in the right direction. So all that's done. We now start to look ahead to full gear. Potentially, I might even add another paint view on the road to full gear or at least think about a special edition of Dynamite or Rampage. We've got to do something. So lots to look forward to. Thank you so much for watching this edition of AEW and, of course, our all-out pay-per-view. It was a good one. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it and subscribe to see more, and we'll see you in the next one.